Hey, please join me in welcoming HTTP Resource to the Resource API family. Welcome, bienvenue, willkommen, caribou. In this video, we introduce the experimental HTTP Resource API, new in Angular 19.2. We start with its purpose, look at its two syntax options, and evaluate when we would use it over resource or Rx resource. As with all of the resource methods in the resource API family, HTTP resource bridges the synchronous world of signals with asynchronous operations. The specialized purpose of HTTP resource is to facilitate HTTP requests, to return the result as a signal, and to do it without promises or observables. Its syntax is straightforward and easy to reason about. Let's take a look. I'm in StockBlitz with a simple sample application open. I'm using Swappy to retrieve Star Wars vehicles. As in most of my recent videos, this example uses Rx resource to retrieve the vehicles into a signal. Let's instead use the new HTTP resource. I'll comment out this code so we have it for comparison. Notice that I'm commenting out the line that injects HTTP client as well. The HTTP resource still uses HTTP client, so any interceptors or other features of HTTP client still work as expected, but we no longer need to explicitly inject it. I'll scroll down so we have a bit more space. Now we're ready to create a new resource with the same name, private vehicles resource equals, but this time we'll call HTTP resource. Just as before, the generic argument is vehicle response. That's the type of the returned HTTP response. We then pass in the URL directly. And that's it. When the vehicle service is initialized, this resource is created and an HTTP get is issued using the provided URL. Just like with the other resource APIs, the HTTP result is returned into the resource's value property signal. We could access the value property directly anywhere we need it, but I often create a clearly named signal to reference the value property. I did that with the vehicle's computed signal. Here we read the signal, and if it's null or undefined, we return an empty array. But notice the interface for vehicle response. With Swappy, the array of vehicles is returned in the results property of the response. In the Rx resource example, we map the response to only return the results property. Now that we are no longer working with an observable, we can't pipe our result through a set of operators but we can use computed or link signal. Let's modify our computed to return the results property from the value signal. We then see the resulting list of vehicles in the UI. And look at our HTTP resource code. Wow, that's short and sweet. By default, HTTP resource handles the response as JSON, but it also supports array buffer blob, and text using subfunctions of HTTP resource, if you need those options. The HTTP resource has the same properties as resource and Rx resource. Here we access the value property, the error property, and the isLoading property. I've covered these properties in detail in prior videos using Rx resource as an example, and the code works the same for HTTP resource. In addition, the HTTP resource has properties such as headers and progress. Bottom line, working with the HTTP resource ref returned from the HTTP resource is similar to the resource ref returned from resource or Rx resource. But we often want to retrieve data based on one or more parameters. For example, we want to select a vehicle model and only get the vehicles with that model. How do we do that with HTTP resource? Well, we can add one or more signals directly to the URL. 
In this example, the SELECT box uses two-way binding to set the selected model signal. Let's add backticks around the URL to define a template literal, and reformat. Then use the dollar and curly brace syntax to define variable placeholders. We'll use one for the URL, then add a question mark to define query parameters. With Swappy, we'll use the search parameter, then define another placeholder for the selected model, and parentheses to read the signal. Let's try it out. Select a vehicle model, and nothing happens. Why not? If we want the resource to react to changes in the signal, we need to pass a reactive function into HTTP resource instead of a string. So let's add an arrow function that returns our string. Will that work? Select a vehicle model, and we see the list of transports. Yay! Select another one, and the HTTP request is executed again with a selected model. Think of this syntax as similar to the request property of Rx resource, and the loader function is handled behind the scenes by HTTP client. We've created a resource that automatically retrieves data whenever the reference signal changes. And notice that there's no subscribing or unsubscribing, no promises, and no observables. Pass in a static string to issue an HTTP request one time using the defined URL. Or pass in a reactive function that returns a string. In that case, the HTTP request is reissued every time the function signals change. I mentioned earlier that HTTP resource has an alternate syntax. I'll copy and paste this HTTP resource and comment out our original for reference. Instead of passing in a string, we can pass an object. That object configures the HTTP request. It can include headers, parameters, and so on. That object includes a URL property to specify the endpoint for the request. It has a method property. Here we specify get. POST also works if you use POST to retrieve data. For example, on a login, we could use POST, pass the username and password in the body, and get back a token. Now is a good time to mention that the resource API, including HTTP resource, is meant for retrieval only. These resource methods are not meant for issuing update requests of any kind. They follow a switch map style of execution, whereby an existing HTTP request is canceled when a new HTTP request is issued. That makes sense for retrievals. If the user quickly selects a different model, we no longer need the original request. But we would not want to accidentally cancel an update operation. Continuing on, we can specify header information. For example purposes, I'll add the accept header property to identify the media type that is acceptable for the response. The passed in object includes an optional params property. Here we define an object with key and value pairs, defining our query parameters and their values. Let's hard code a search parameter for now. And here are the other available object properties. Notice that our UI now lists only vehicles with our hard-coded search parameter. Can we replace this hard-coded search criteria with our signal? Yep, but there is one additional thing we need. Recall what it is? If we want to define a reactive resource, we need a reactive function. Add an arrow function that returns the object. Wow, look at all those errors! Any idea what's wrong? The arrow function thinks our object is a multi-line function, so let's add parentheses around the object. That's better. Next, we replace the hard-coded search string with our signal, this dot selected model, and add parentheses to read the signal. Let's try it out. Select a model, and it works! We get only the transport vehicles. Nice. Use this more elaborate syntax only if you need a more detailed request message. I'll comment this out. 
For our example, the simple string syntax is sufficient. So, with the growing family of resource APIs, which one should you use when? Here's a handy table to help. Use the resource API directly if you want to use the JavaScript fetch method and work with promises. Use the Rx resource API if you want to work with observables. This is especially useful if you have additional processing or related data to retrieve using observable map operators, such as merge map or fork join. Use the HTTP resource API if you have requests specified with a URL or you have more complex requests that require defining a request object. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful, please like and subscribe.